The Hawk Jackson making his third title defense and shooting for his third consecutive first round knockout. Our first bout, the WBC middleweight championship, Jackson versus Collins. We got to see Jackson his last two fights, two first round knockouts, including one in 50 seconds over Ismail Negron in his last fight. Is this going to be just another Julian Jackson execution, or is Ron Collins more of a quality opponent? Well, the thing that had those two guys knocked out before they walked in was they were scared to death of Julian Jackson. He inspires fear something like Tyson used to do with people. Now, he shouldn't do that to Collins because Collins has worked with him in the gym, knows him, there should be no surprises here. Still, you're facing Julian Jackson, he is the Hawk, and he has got a powerful punch. Did Collins make a mistake by arriving in Mexico City as late as this past Monday? All the other fighters have been here for several weeks. May battle the altitude problem. That may, it's kind of a lackadaisical attitude to come in, although experts say you only need four days. If it was my fighter and I was facing Julian Jackson, I'd be here two weeks ahead of time in tip-top condition. All right, Bertie, it's Julian the Hawk Jackson versus Ron Collins for the WBC middleweight championship coming up. And Julian Jackson, a young man who often fights as if he's double parked. The Hawk. All right, we've already been through the instructions there one time comes. in the Olympic Championship of the World. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions from the challenger? No Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. Come on. Jackson's looking to end it in the opening round. And down goes Milton. He does not look like he is going to get up. He looks like he's part of the fixture. He's part of the canvas. The magician is down for the count. I expect a tough, clean fight. Any questions from the challenger? Any questions from the champion? Let's get it on. When a guy comes up against a real champion, what's happening is what's happening right now. Ushered over by Bill Swain. Six. So that's a Seven. break for Negron. I don't know if that's okay. a break. If that's a break, I don't want any of those breaks. Well, it's all over. It's all academic. Whoa. Ismail Negron in disbelief. But you're right. He probably just saved his life. From the opening bell, he had no idea of what it feels like to be in with a talent as sharp and as fast as Julian Jackson. And here is the Hawk, WBC middleweight champ Julian Jackson, who does not like to waste time. 11 first round KOs, including his last two, and that last one which ended in 50 seconds against Negron, the quickest KO in middleweight championship history. 43 and 1 with 41 knockouts, 14 consecutive victories, all by KO, a man with explosive power. And the challenger, Ron Tequila Collins, out of the Lone Star State, rated number nine by the WBC, appearing in his first world title fight. A southpaw, 21 and one, just seven knockouts. A very successful amateur career, and once the number one rated amateur middleweight in the world. Collins was once Jackson's sparring partner, but he told us the only thing he learned from that is how good a puncher Jackson is. Collins hasn't fought since last August, claiming organizational problems, but says he has trained hard for this fight. Let's check the numerical breakdown to the tail of the tape. The veteran Jackson at 31, Collins 28. Collins with the half-inch height advantage at 159 and a half. Collins one pound heavier than Jackson and the two and a half-inch reach advantage to Jackson. And to the rules, according to the WBC, 10-point must system, three judges scoring the fight, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule, only the referee can stop the fight, and a fighter cannot be saved by the bell except in the last round. So here at El Torreo, which means bull ring in Spanish, we are set for the official introductions for the WBC Middleweight Championship. Here's ring announcer Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the El Torreo Bull Ring in Mexico City as Don King Productions, Pro Vantage Boxing, and El Torreo present the first of our three world title main events of the evening. Damas y caballeros, bienvenidos a la primera atracción especial de la noche de 12 vueltas por el título peso medio Consejo Mundial de Boxeo. 
This bout is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council. The president, Jose Suleiman, supervisors at ringside, Juan Jose Torres Landa and Pedro Mendoza Vences. Introducing the judges at ringside, presentando los jueces. Victor Manuel Cervantes Steele, Elasio Perez, Marco Rodriguez, and presenting the referee in charge of this bout, Guadalupe Garcia. Well, fans, this bout coming away is scheduled for 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Middleweight Championship of the World. Introducing first the challenger fighting out of the blue corner, presentando en la esquina azul. Wearing silver trunks with black trim, he hails from Houston, Texas, and Los Estados Unidos. He weighed in at 159 and one half pounds, pesando 72 kilos, and a record of 21 wins, 21 victorias, one loss, solamente una derrota, and seven wins by way of knockout, siete ganadas por knockout. Please welcome the WBC's number nine ranked contender, presentando el retador número nueve en el mundo, Ron Tequila Collins. Y el campeón en la esquina roja and his opponent across the ring in the red corner. He entered the ring wearing white trunks, hailing from St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands. He weighed in at 158 and one half pounds, con un peso de 71.3 kilos. With a sensational record of 43 wins, 43 ganadas, one loss, solamente una derrota, 41 wins by way of knockout. Y un sobresaliente, 41 victorias por knockout. Welcome, the former WBA junior middleweight champion tonight, defending his WBC middleweight crown, demos la bienvenida al sensacional Julian the Hawk Jackson. Aquí está el referee Guadalupe Garcia. Come on here, please. Well, remember, the fault is come points. May a good fight, overall clean. Good luck to win the bets. Go to your corners. So we're getting set for the WBC Middleweight Championship. Two-time world champion Julian Jackson will be wearing the white trunks with the Virgin Island motif. The challenger Ron Tequila Collins wearing the silver with the black trim. The referee is Guadalupe Garcia out of Mexico City. All the judges are from Mexico City and we are set to go. Round one scheduled for 12 and right off the bat Collins comes out bombing. He certainly didn't wait to even shake hands. He went right to it. Julian Jackson, devastating puncher. Likes to apply pressure from the opening bell usually. Excellent hand speed. He trains to go the distance despite so many quick endings. Well, let's see how he handles the left-hander. Collins is very fast for left-hander. Confuses you with a lot of moves. Jackson may be perplexed in the first round or two here as he tries to figure out how to come in. If Collins can at least survive the first round, he'll have some confidence. 36 of Jackson's 41 knockouts in four rounds or less. Collins, a natural right-hander, converted and stayed lefty. Sound technician, likes to go with combinations to outpoint opponents. Very aggressive, average hand speed, but his punching power underestimated. Not that, not that much movement from Julian Jackson as far as circling away from that left hand or trying to do anything different than fighting him just like he would fight a right-hander. He hasn't, he hasn't shown any, any adjustment in his style. He's just going straight ahead. And as we mentioned on the open, Collins should be more of a quality opponent for Jackson than we have seen in the recent past. Well, one thing is different. He's not frozen. He's certainly not scared of Julian Jackson. He's fighting here with a lot of brio, with a lot of spunk. Good, hard, right jabs. And down goes Jackson! But it was a slip. slip. Total slip. Jackson showing that's too, too aggressive, and he's reaching too much. 
meaning Collins is befuddling him with that style right now. He has not figured out what to do with that. And just going in and throwing a punch like that, reaching right like that, is going to get him nailed in the counter punch. Ron Collins has never been knocked out. Jackson, a familiar opponent for Collins, a former sparring partner for the Hawk. But he says he doesn't think it'll be an advantage because guys don't fight the same way they train. Now, the only advantage he has is he knows he's a human being and he's good, but he's not Superman. And uh, that's given him a lot of uh, spunk here in his first round. Collins doing very well in his first round. Collins in the silver does feel Jackson may have trouble with his southpaw style. They'll be coming at him from a different angle. Less than 30 seconds in the opening round. An impressive one for the challenger overall. Collins told us if he learned anything from sparring with the champion, it's that the man can punch. He just got hit. Collins just got hurt with a good right hand. Collins got hurt. It's only 10 seconds, eight. He might survive this. Hey. Collins hey. staggered as we head for the bell. Let's check out the slip. You see, he was much too anxious to throw a punch, and he got hit and counter on the way. Now, Jackson doesn't ever quit. See that right hand? That's the kind that'll put out. Look at Collins doing a dance right there. All his nerves are jangling, and it's all he could do to survive a knockdown there. All in all, he did a wonderful job in that first round, except for that one punch that Julian Jackson landed. Round two scheduled for 12 for the WBC Middleweight Championship, and I would not be surprised if uh, Collins won that first round on the judges' cards. Well, one punch doesn't, uh, doesn't make a, a round, and he has won two minutes and some odd. Julian stepping on the, the boot of um, Collins. Oh boy. And Jackson looking to pick up the pace. Oh, Julian's in there. He's in there to destroy, to finish. The man has got a heavy punch as Julian Jackson. If Collins gets tagged, lights out. Well, he's already felt that right hand and got him in bad trouble, and he's beginning to fight a lot more cautious. There's that right hand again, didn't land flush. Collins doesn't have much room to roam. It's a very small ring, 16 feet. Every one of those punches is thrown with intention of knocking out Collins. Hit on the break. And a warning from referee Guadalupe Garcia. Jackson measuring Collins out. Jackson showing no respect for the punching power of Collins. Willing to take a shot to come in, but boy, what he's throwing is straight bombs. Straight bombs from Julian Jackson. Collins told us he'll let Jackson come to him and counter punch. There's a heavy right by Jackson, and Collins is tied up in the corner. Oh, Collins almost hit the referee, Guadalupe Garcia, and now Jackson wailing away. That punch just puts you out that right hand is something devastating by Julian Jackson. It's now a matter of time as Julian Jackson has Caught him in the first round and now closed him in the second. This is what Jackson does so well. There's a pretty good left hand by Collins that got through. And a combination by Collins. Collins fighting back gamely. You got to give him that. He looked like he had Julian going there for a second. But Julian Jackson is back clear-eyed and with mean intention in his eyes. Jackson just pouring in, missed with a wild right. Oh, you can feel the breeze from our position from that one. That was close. Collins no longer has any spring in his leg. He has taken a pounding this second round. And now Jackson going to the ribs. 
Another wild miss by Jackson, and Collins couldn't counter. Jackson, too anxious to put him out. Too anxious. And round two going into the books. He's too strong, but you hear me? You hear me? Ron, you hear me talking you? But get out that box to guy with the left hand. If you stay still, get the left hand out. No swap with him. He's too strong for that shit. Look at him. Look at him. You hear me? Okay, let's get out that box. Let's go. Oh yeah, swap with the guy. Act like you're Are you awake? You feel that? Do you feel that? God damn it, wake up. Let's get out that Hey, Look at me. Start boxing, god damn it. Watch Collins. Oh, what a shot that gets him in trouble. But Julian Jackson unable to finish him as Collins then comes back and looks like he had a brief moment where he landed solidly on Jackson. Not enough to keep him off a big round for Jackson. And it seems to be even as we head into round three. Trainer Al Potato Pie Bolden wanting Ron Collins to mix up his punches and jabs and stay out of Jackson's reach. Box him. He thinks people don't know how good a fighter his man Collins is. And look out. Oh, Guadalupe Garcia almost became a victim. That's the a second time that almost happened tonight. Strange things happen in bull rings. Yes. Julian back to the body, digging where it hurts. Right on the side of Collins, taking the legs right out from under Collins. Watch those rapid punches, says referee Garcia to Jackson. Now Jackson flicking the jab. Looking to set up the big right. There you go. There you go, Ron. Come on. Are you sure? Come on, Ron. Now this is what Collins Corner did not want. They don't want him to fight with uh, Julian Jackson because of his superior strength. He's much bigger and much stronger fighter. You just don't want to maul and push with him. Those little hooks by Julian Jackson are starting to add up. Crisp left hook. And that's a right by Jackson. He's got Collins in trouble. A ferocious right hand. And now Jackson's looking to finish it. What a survivor is Collins. But what a punishment he's taken to the body. Collins Look showing tremendous heart. He's hanging in there. And he stumbles off the ropes. What body punishment he took. Approaching the final minute of round three. Julian looking a little ragged there. Maybe mad that he didn't put him out. A good right hand by Julian Jackson. And that snapped Collins' head back. Boy, right, what's keeping Collins up? He is getting hammered with these shots. There's two right hands in a row. Three. And a hook. Oh! Collins came back with a good hook. And Collins unable to protect his hand. Now he comes back with rights. And a right staggers Collins. Big right hand by Jackson. Boy, Collins has got a lot of heart. you got to give Collins a lot of credit. What heart on right. Collins. Final 30 seconds of round three. Can Collins survive being better here in the third? You get the feeling that all Julian has to do is step on the gas and he's got him out. Collins has no legs, but he comes back with a combination. All that is is desperation on a part of Collins. Julian's got him where he wants him, but won't close. Collins may be fighting on instinct here. Rubbery legs in the final seconds of the third. And Jackson lets him go. And we're going to a fourth. He dead tired. He dead tired now. You don't tuck everything he had. You don't tuck every fucking thing he had now. Go out there. Yeah. Spin, spin it away. Just spin it away. Spin. We don't care what you spin. You hear me? Leave it here. Let's go. Baby, Let's go. Listen, you son. Look this motherfucker. Come on. Leave I'm it here. Not, and you got to fight now. Open this is the hand. first time he really got Collins in trouble. All the way back. You would get the feeling those ropes weren't there. He'd still be backing up. Later in the round, he didn't quit. He just came right back with some more. Deep breath, 
there is an incredible heart beating in Collins and also a great ability to stay up because he should have gone down. Still, Julian Jackson is not showing the killer instinct that he had before, and he looks exhausted in his corner. It's only the fourth round, which could be the altitude. These ropes are extremely tight, and they may have saved Ron Collins. Well, he's talking to him. Collins is talking to Julian Jackson, saying, now, you had your innings, that comes my turn. Very confident young man from Houston, Texas, joying away with Julian Jackson. Julian not saying anything. You got a feeling that he's going to punctuate that with a left hook. Collins just saying, come on. A courageous Ron Collins. Julian got a little smile on his face like saying, you're talking to me, Chuck? Are you talking to me? If I'm Collins, I don't know if I take this strategy. Well, it might, it might take his mind off mayhem. Because Julian is prepared to get this guy out of here. Jackson looking like he's measuring Collins out. Again, sticking the left jab. And now some wrestling tactics by Collins. And he finally managed to get Collins down, although it doesn't count. And he's being cautioned by Guadalupe Garcia. Julian not as sharp now, not as fast now. You get to wondering if he's uh, gotten so used to these one-round knockouts that he forgot he's got to keep on going when he doesn't knock the guy out. Good punches on the part of Collins, not hit much, but at least it's an offensive. Jackson's only defeat to Mike McCallum in 1986 for the WBA junior middleweight title, a second-round knockout. But he is so accustomed to putting opponents away early. You gotta wonder if the altitude, the pollution, the smog taking its toll on Jackson, because this is very uncharacteristic. Why wouldn't it be on Collins? He's the one that's uh, that shortchanged the training. He's, well, he's the one that should be short. But it seems to be working the opposite way. I think Julian just loaded up too much in those two rounds, didn't get the result he wanted, and he's gotta get his gas tank. Back in gear, he's got to go to that extra gas tank. He doesn't look sharp. Does Keep Julian Jackson. Well, Collins told us he thinks he has the ability to outpoint Julian Jackson. Come on. Well, he's going to be around to hear the points if he keeps taking those right hands. And he continues to jaw away at the champion. Those punches met in midair. And Jackson forced back. Combination by Collins. How has Collins got anything left to come back like that? That is really good conditioning on the part of Collins. An amazing reserve for Ron Collins. Ooh. Final seconds of the round number four. Tremendous you atmosphere punch, at El Torreo in Mexico City. They haven't had bullfighting here in 22 years, but they're trying to bring it back on Thursdays and make it a regular thing. Pro wrestling very big here at El Torreo. They also have opera and concerts. And now boxing. This is round number five, scheduled for 12 for the WBC Middleweight Championship. And so far, Ron Collins in the silver out of Houston, Texas, showing tremendous determination against the champion, Jackson. Jackson not even looking like he wants to mix up right now. He's just kind of taking this round right now and just going easy. Punch in there, Ron. Punch in there, Ron. There you go. 
Tonight is the third title defense for Jackson. He is 7-0 in title fights. Nice right hand lead by Julian, but there's no steam in it like there were in the, in the last two, three rounds before round two and round three. I think he's going to have to get stung to get back to fighting again. Combination by Jackson, and Collins just talks to Jackson. Whoa. And once again, Collins is stung. And, that's, and let me tell you, hit, that was great. He should have gone down, but he's there. He's still there, Collins, still weaving and bobbing. Now he goes down, finally. Three, four, five, six, seven. He gets up at seven. He should, that should be it. That's it. That is it. Julian Jackson with a big knockout. It happens here in round number five. And Julian Jackson with a big smile, a very game challenger, Rob Cullins, showing tremendous courage. Julian Jackson, who used to be in a street gang as a kid growing up in the Virgin Islands, turning his life around with boxing and religion. His father, his brother, a pastor, helped him tremendously. And the challenger, Ron Collins, being consoled. That's his wife. Jackson now 44 and 1 with 42 knockouts. It didn't happen in the first round, but he'll take it. Watch how he got him in trouble. Collins with that short hook. Look at his legs are all gone. Julian says gone down, but he doesn't. He has to work some more before he gets the brave and trepid and hardy. Collins down. Ron Collins really gave it a shot tonight. Pummeling him. You see how many times he's missed there? Until finally it's just too much. And uh, Collins goes down a brave effort, but Julian Jackson overwhelmed. Let's take another look at that. Watch the hook. Now the hook right there. And wow, look at that dance. That means all circuits are going out. And then, of course, nobody can finish like Julian Jackson today. He's got such a heavy hand. And even if he misses you three or four times, he'll finally hit you that one shot. And there you go. And that was it. That right hand was too much for uh, the weary but brave Ron Collins, and he went down and out. So Collins falls to 21 and 2 now. And Julian Jackson retains his championship. Julian the Hawk Jackson is now the one doing the talking. We're standing by with the official announcement from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time, 1 minute 37 seconds. In round number 5, damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo, 1 minuto 37 segundos. En el quinto round, the winner by way of knockout, el ganador por knockout, the world champion, WBC middleweight titleist, Julian the Hawk Jackson. So there you have it, Julian the Hawk Jackson retaining his WBC middleweight title, the embrace with Ron Cummins. Coming up, two more championship fights, both in the 140-pound weight divisions. We've got Edwin Rosario taking on Akinobu Haranaka for the WBA junior welterweight title. And our main event, undefeated three-time world champ Julio Cesar Chavez, Mexico's native son in the spotlight against Angel Hernandez for the WBC Super Lightweight Championship. So we are set for post-fight interviews in the ring with the both combatants. It should be interesting. Let's go up to first. Julian, it looked like you got a little tired when you got him the second and third round. You were in such great shape, and then all of a sudden you looked like you ran out of gas and picked it up again when you knocked him out. Well, first of all, Freddie, let me say thanks to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would just like to say, Mike Tyson, we love you and love me watching the show. I, and I pray that God will talk to you and just deal with you there, wherever you are. We love you, Mike. All right. Let's, we're looking at the end of the fight, Ron. Let's look together. 
uh, if our, our monitor is just flickering on and off, but we're looking at this powerful hook. Ron, this is what you call the dance of unconsciousness, my man. Yes, I did. Um, what happened, I went off in and Julian's so strong that he threw everything off that I wanted to do. I wanted to go out and box him and he started throwing power punches. So I wanted to do the same. I wanted to sit in there and try to take his stuff and give him some back, but he was a stronger man. All right, you were a brave and determined fighter. Julian, did you have any doubts about knocking him out? After you all, you hit him with everything but the kitchen sink. Well, I had no doubts whatsoever, but I knew that his uh, southpaw stand would have given me a little trouble, you know, uh, in coping with it. Most of the champions have trouble with southpaw, and I had my, my trouble, but I must say that I knew that uh, Ron Collins couldn't take my punches. I knew he's a good boxer. I knew he was going to try to survive the rounds, and I just had to go out there and put the pressure. Uh, the fact that you sparred with him before, did that help you any, or what, does it make any difference? It doesn't make any difference, and I think Ron knows that. Right. You know? One of the things that seemed to confuse you was he kept talking to you all during one of those rounds. What was he saying? Well, he was trying to get me to uh, punch myself out. And I realized that, so I, I held back, you know, and I let him uh, make the mistakes. So he talked himself out, you knocked him out. Definitely. definitely. All right. Don, Don King, I see behind me someplace. Here. Don King, you got a middleweight here. I don't see who could beat. How can you keep from making big killer matches for this guy? Well, they're all afraid to fight him. We're looking right now to fight... Uh, uh, Tiberi, that's one of the guys who fought with uh, Tony. We want to fight Tony. Tony, in fact, we're supposed to make a match with Tony when he gets through tomorrow. If he's still, if he's a successor, we are ready, willing, and able to unify the title with Julian Jackson. And we also want anybody out there in Columbia, Bay, any one of them that come and fight. Julian, I'd like to thank, uh, thank Dan King for this opportunity again to be here in Mexico. I love the Mexican, and they're so beautiful and warm. And I also like to say thanks to Pro Vantage and everyone else that have been supporting me. Right. All right. One last night. Good night from Ron Collins. He had a brave night. Ron. Yeah, I, I would like to thank Don King and John Julius and also for giving me the opportunity to fight for the title. And I hope they let me come back and fight again. Well, you're a brave man. You deserve another chance. And so back to ringside. Hi, Virgin Islands. Jubilee time in St. Thomas. Number one in boxing. We put the best with the best. We don't try to pick hey, matches for guys money. that they can get an easy fight. You want not an easy fight. You now back to the disaster. <laughs> Believe it. Oh, quiet. Okay. Unless, wait a minute. It's it's Steve Albert at ringside that's dying to talk to us. Oh, All right. Thanks very much, Ferdy. Coming up, former three-time lightweight champion.